Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Medieval Reader. So, I just want to have a quick chat about things that I'm thinking about. There isn't a lot of structure to this video, um, but there's just some thoughts that I'm having on a number of things, booktube related, language related, and I thought I would just talk about them. I'm waiting for water to boil, so uh, I can have dinner. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is um, booktube. It's just some thoughts I've been having. I really, really enjoy booktube. I love shaketube. I've been reading a lot um, because of everything I'm assigned, but I just don't make my recent read videos. Uh, maybe because I just to take some time. Um, but I find that I read a lot of books that I mark as read on Goodreads and I give them a star rating. But then I never talk about them, I don't mention them. There are just so many French works. And it's partially because I don't know whether these works are necessarily available in translation, and even if they are, because they are French. I'm not sure how many people would be interested in reading them in translation. Translated fiction in general isn't very popular, so it's part of my um, hesitation. And also I just feel like it's hard to do justice to these books in five to ten minutes. Uh, maybe if I did a review, but even so, I don't really want to do a review. I want to really talk about the themes in the books, and I, I feel like I really can't do that unless other people have read the books. So that's really what I enjoy the most about booktube, is being able to talk with other people about the works that we read together. Um, so that's why I've been hesitating to make recent, re recent reads videos or review videos, you know, those sort of things. Um, but I read quite a lot. Uh, so let me know what would interest you the most, especially concerning works that I read in French. Um, you know, what kind of books do you want me to talk about? The ones that are available in translation? If they are not available in translation, would you be okay with me just summarizing them for you? You know, what do you want me to do with that? Uh, because you're the audience and I don't exactly know what you guys would want me to do. Um, so, so there's that. I've been really enjoying ShakeTube. Um, I've been starting to read Boccaccio de Cameron and I have some thoughts about that. So I will be this Saturday when I make my weekly video about the stuff I'm reading. Um, I will hopefully be able to talk about uh, Boccaccio de Cameron. Um, I'm almost done with day one, which is pretty short, um, but I'd like to read days one through three by this Saturday. Probably we'll just read it Saturday. Okay, so there's that. And then there's the language learning aspect. And I really want to chronicle my language learning experience on Booktube a bit for other people who are interested in learning languages uh, because I might help them. Um, I my, my language skills are really good. Um, obviously, I'm doing a PhD in French. I wouldn't be able to do a PhD in French if my language skills weren't good. I can read just about anything, including really, really dense philosophical works. And yet there's just so much that I don't understand. So I can understand the overall message of a passage, but there are so many words I have to skip over or I won't look up. And I think it's just because I'm becoming lazy. When I was first learning French, I was looking up like every other word and I would keep a notebook of all these terms that I didn't know. But now I just don't do that. I just am satisfied with skipping over the words. And I find that this is a problem because it impoverishes my language learning. You know, I'm not using these words then in my writing. I'm not using them in my speech. Um, I also find that because I've learned French in the context of academia, I can talk a lot about very abstract things, but I can't talk about everyday things as easily. I really would like to keep a notebook, again, of words that I come across and to be more diligent in looking up words that I don't know, that may not be extremely important, like if I don't know this word, it won't prevent me from knowing what the text is saying. But at the same time, like I think that these words are so important. You know, there, there's that there's this point where you you reach, you you can start plateauing. I, I think is what I'm trying to say because you only need to know a certain range of words to be able to read just about anything. 
But if you know all these other words, then your language skills improve so much. So it's kind of interesting to see how learning language in a school environment really shapes the kind of things you can talk about, you know, like it really influences the things you can talk about. So I can talk about really abstract things, but I can't talk about ordinary, everyday grocery shopping things as easily. <laughs> so I find that really interesting. Um, I don't know if any of you guys who've, um, you know, been learning language in school settings, if you've had that experience, but that's certainly been my experience. Okay, the water's now boiling, so I will, I will be back in a moment. I really want to read Les Miserables at the start of next year. I've mentioned before that I thought I'd host a very casual read-along from January through March of 2018. Like three months is good because I'm really reading other things and I'll be so be preparing for my MA exam, which I already took an MA exam a few months ago, so it's like I get to take another MA exam. <laughs> Can't have enough, I guess. Um, I just... I'm a, I'm a person who gets very obsessed with things. And currently I'm reading a volume of a 20 volume novel written in the 17th century. You heard it right, 20 volumes, I think. It's like over 40,000 pages. It's called Artemis and it's by um, Madame de Scudery. Mademoiselle, was she ever married? I think she might have been a widow. I need to remember the details. Um, but I'm loving it and I was, my impression is that I'm supposed to read by tomorrow passages from two of her works, but I've just been so obsessed with reading from this one work that I'm not sure if I will go to the other work. And I feel like that's how I am in general, is that I get very obsessed with things. And the whole point of this project has been for us to find to, to figure out how to read these works and to find um, passages, essentially big chunks of the work that we would enjoy and want to write about. And so I'm definitely going to be writing about this work, Achtemen is it's called. Uh, and uh, I, I just want to stick with it. I, I'm that person who um, reads passages for the SAT or the UGRE or whatever, and I'm just so struck and, and obsessed with the content of what I'm reading, that I forget that I'm taking an exam. I'm aware that I'm being a bit rebellious by not reading the other text, but I, I'm okay with that. I feel like I'm gonna justify that by saying, well, I you know, read 400 pages of this one book. I just feel like the professor too is looking for people who have passion for these works, and I do have passion for it. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really wanna have a scattered understanding of any one work. I really want to stick with one. And it's strange because when you have a book that's like 40,000 pages, you would think I'd be incredibly, incredibly um, intimidated. But like, of course we're not, you know, we're not assigned 40,000 pages. I mean, we we're supposed to read a few hundred pages of maybe like a hundred pages of each or something like that. Um, but I want to read all 40,000 pages of Achtamen. I really want to see what happens. I think it would be really cool to read the longest book ever written. Because Achtamen is the longest work ever written. But I'm like that. I, I find my obsessions and I stick with them. You know, there's been this large discussion on booktube about whether you specialize or you, you read widely. I, I very much specialize. Uh, I do not read widely. I think it's quite clear that I don't. Um, I love specializing and getting obsessed with this one thing. But that, that prevents me from being able to talk about a wide range of things with people because I know a lot about one thing and then I know essentially nothing about everything else. So personally, unless you were studying to be an academic, it's good to, be, to have a broad reading taste and know a little bit about everything because then at least you can be able to talk about it with other people. Whereas like, I know next to nothing about popular culture and even American history. Yeah, so it's bad. I mean, <laughs> but that's my personality type. And that's also what prevents me sometimes from making really interesting booktube videos because I'm not, I'm aware that my reading interests are very, very niche. Anyway, that was a long rambling video talking about myself, booktube, language learning, school, whatever. 
but I thought that having a video like this would be um, cathartic and, and, and you know I could be able to express myself and uh, maybe you could relate with something I'm saying um, but it's good to know that there are other readers out there that I can chat about books with and um, I'm really enjoying being on book too so thank you guys for watching um, subscribing etc and I will be talking to you hopefully on Saturday. Bye now.